What's up guys? It's Mars from Audio Judgment and today I'm going to explain what's up with those TS parameters. However, I'm not going to talk about each parameter individually. I'm going to have a different approach so you can get the bigger picture. First of all, let's start with the name. Thiel Small or TS for short. When I first heard about these parameters, I asked myself, what's a thiel? And why is it small? Well, it turns out they're actually names. It's Neville Thiel who wrote a paper on how various parameters affect the performance of speakers in infinite baffle and bass reflex enclosures, and after some time Richard Small added his contributions to these papers and therefore the name Thiel Small parameters. Now we understand why they are called this way, so let's check out what's up with these parameters. And like I said, I'm not going to take each parameter one by one and explain them. The list is long, and unless you are really into this stuff, you are not going to care. However, I want to explain how they work. How does a modeling software like WinISD, for example, use these parameters to predict how a specific enclosure will sound if we place the driver inside that particular box? Before I go on, let me give a small disclaimer. I'm not an electrical engineer and the model I will present is simplified so it can be understood by most people. Hope I don't hurt someone's feelings that not all the variables are taken into consideration. So let's begin. We have a speaker, and this speaker is made by various electrical and mechanical components. So this means that the speaker will have a number of electrical and mechanical parameters. And the awesome part is that the mechanical ones have an electrical equivalent. What? Yeah, this means I can take all of the parameters of the speaker and map them out on an electrical circuit diagram. So let's take one step back. So we want to map out the speaker equivalent circuit. We have RE, which is the DC resistance of the speaker. This is obviously a resistor in the electrical circuit. A speaker has a voice coil, which is obviously an inductor. While the electrical parameters are obvious, the mechanical ones are not. But anyway, the compliance is an inductor, for example, and moving mass is a capacitor in the speaker equivalent circuit. But let's all forget that and let me show you a practical example. So we have to look at the impedance plot of a speaker. And we see this curve. Even though this is marketed as a 4 ohm speaker, in reality the impedance looks like this because it varies with frequency. It's not a straight line at 4 ohms. And graphs show a peak at the resonant frequency of the driver plus a rising impedance with frequency because of the voice coil. An inductor rejects higher frequencies, and that's why the impedance curves goes higher as frequency increases. Let's try to replicate this by making an electrical circuit in XSIM. So we have RE, which is a series resistor, and we also have the voice coil, which is an inductor. And then the motional impedance of the speaker at the resonant frequency is the result of a resistor, inductor, and a capacitor in parallel. The inductor represents the compliance, the capacitor the moving mass, and the resistors the mechanical damping of the speaker. And this is the simplest form to replicate the speaker as an electrical circuit. Let's test this out. Now, all we have to do is set the values straight. I'm using a Dayton Audio Ultimax 10 inch as an example, and for RE and LE, we simply copy the values. So we have 3.2 ohms for RE, LE is 1.28 millihenry. Now for the rest of the parameters, I'm not going to bore you with formulas, I'm just going to click quickly show you how to calculate them. You can pause the video to see the formulas.
Now in XSIM these components, the inductors do have some resistance so I'm going to dial this down and that should be about it. Now let's take a look at our impedance plot in XSIM and compare it to the one in the spec sheet of the driver. They look very similar, don't they? The impedance plot is very important. If you have an impedance graph, you can extract most of the speaker parameters from it. Okay, good. So now, how do we model the response of a speaker box? Simple, by adding components to the circuit. For example, if you put a speaker in a closed box, what happens? You simply add another compliance into the mix. This is the air volume inside the box. So this means we add another inductor in parallel. So for example, if we place another inductor over here, whenever you place a speaker in a sealed box, the resonant frequency will go up. If I increase the value of the inductor, the resonant frequency goes down. If I keep going and make the inductor super large, it's like having a huge box and the speaker might as well be in free air, even though it is inside an enclosure. If I want to simulate a bass reflex box, you add two more elements. You have the box volume, which is an extra compliance, and you also have a, the mass of air inside the port, which is a capacitor. And this means we have to wire uh, an additional inductor and capacitor because now we have the port as well so we have a, co a capacitor over here so we have to add another inductor and a capacitor in uh, parallel and uh, I'm just I'm not going to show you the formulas for these components I'm just gonna tune them exactly as the the, the speaker parameters. In this case, if you match these values, so here we we put 32 millihenries and the capacitor 1090 microfarads. In this case, uh, we tune the box to the exact the same resonant frequency of the driver in free air. And we can see in the impedance plot, uh, impedance plot over here, if you look at the dip between the two peaks, that point marks the resonant frequency of the box, which should be 26.9. And indeed, we can see that uh, the value matches perfectly. And also another indicator that the box is tuned at the same frequency of the uh, resonant frequency of the driver is that uh, because these two peaks uh, match in height. But right now you are asking, how is this impedance plot going to show me the frequency response of a speaker inside the box? Well, it won't. It could, if I dig a little deeper and show you some formulas on how to plot the frequency response graph. I'm amazed if people are still watching right now and discussing a long math formula will surely scare everyone away. Instead, I tried to show some electrical circuits on the fly and get a feel on how these parameters actually make a difference. So, let's wrap this up. I want to thank anyone who is still watching right now. You must really be into audio and I salute you. If you like what I do, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And I'll see you next time. Peace.